Ladies and gentlemen, this is the solution for lab four. And lab four picks up where we ended with lab three, except this time we want to create two new portfolios using the prob m indices. And the prob m indices are, again, they were uh, created by Dr. Masood Banish of forensic accounting. Uh, he, wanted to he wanted to find factors or ratios that, or indices that helped identify earnings manipulators. Uh, very cool piece of research. We can talk, we're going to talk about it more later. And basically, using replacing our previous signal with these actual uh, what we call the problem indices using fundamental ratio, we're getting closer and closer to what quantitative value investors do and what our end goal is essentially. Now, these indices we technically use them to filter for stocks that are I don't want to say shady, but there's something not right about their financial statements. So when we're looking at the universe of possible stocks, especially if we're looking at small caps. Uh, these are the standard or the basic. I mean, obviously, there's so many other ratios that uh, different quants use, but these are some of the basic ones, the prob M ones. So it's always important to know. So again, we want to use the same tickers from the Apple industry. Um, because we're using the get financial command from quant mod, which gets fundamental data from Google, um, we are going to run into some situation where some stocks don't have adequate data. In that case, what we're going to do is we're just simply going to exclude the ones. We, we already know which ones don't have adequate data. In line three, those tickers, we need to exclude them because they don't have adequate data. This is the last time we'll be using Get Financials anyway. I'm going to try to get you guys set some data to have more data so we can play with it and have, a, have some more interesting analysis. Um, we're going to, for each of the remaining tickers left, we're going to calculate the, the, each of the eight problem indices. Again, we can get that straight from a cheat sheet from my formula. And we're going to create two portfolios. The first portfolio is going to be the four. We're going to take a total score of the problem indices and the four stocks with the lowest scores. We're going to put that in portfolio one. And the four stocks with the highest problem total scores will be in portfolio two. And just like last time, we're going to, we want to back test the both, both portfolios to see how adequate those ratio, the problem ratios were in picking winners and losers. We want to back test this from the beginning of 2017 to February 12, 2018. Okay, now the first part is just like our lab three first part. I basically just copy and pasted it, and we can run it right here. If you don't remember what's going on, just go back to the lab three part one video and review it. Right now, my in line 14 tick is my vector of all the ticks that I from the from the Apple industry. If I run it down here in the console, you can see all the tickers. Right now, the problem here is <clears throat> we already know that some of these stickers don't have adequate amount of data, and we need to filter for them. Okay, so I'm, there's two ways to do it. I was happy to see that there's a long way and then a real short way. I was happy to see that um, some of the some of you guys, Carter and Brett, actually saw your code, uh, found the easy way to do it. But I'm going to do it both ways. I'm going to do the hard way and then the the uh, easy way, or the, the nice simple way to do it. So the hard way, again, is very simple. We're just going to filter for each ticker, right? Now, the trick here is, see if we create, I'm going to create a new variable called tick2 to put all my filter ticks in. The trick here is, because we're doing the negative, because we're saying tick, uh, tick, again, we're doing, our, we're doing our conditional slicing or our, our Boolean slicing does not equal, let's take the first case, seeker, right? If I just run this right here, right? Let me just run this line here so you can see down the console what's happening. You'll see that seeker has been excluded, all right? That's fine, perfect. Now, what I can't do, because this is a negation saying not equal seeker, I cannot use my or command in this case, all right? Let me show you for the next case. Save space. Let me just do this for Cray. Right. If I do this again, let me just run this line so you can see what's filtered out. If I do this, you'll notice down here. See, both Seeker and Cray are back. Why? Because effectively, what we're saying here is, show me the tickers where they do not equal Seeker or they do not equal Cray. Well, if that's the case, here. 
Apple obviously it doesn't equal seeker or create, so that's fine. But down here, when you do seeker, you're saying, okay, is seeker not equal to seeker? Why that's true. We should exclude it. Or, but the problem here is that with the or, but this also does not equal create, which is true. Therefore, it's included. When you use an or statement, if you have any true statement, it's going to include that ticker. The right way to do it when you have a negation is to do the and percent. Because now we're saying exclude the ticks where it does not equal seeker and it does not equal cray as, as well. Right? So if I just run this line right here, you will see now both seeker and cray have been excluded. So let's just expand this out now. All right? I'm going to do. Copy and paste this to move it faster. And again, this is the long way, so bear with me. We're going to replace this with nice. We're going to replace this with OSS. We're going to replace this with SCKT. We're going to replace this with DVMT. <clears throat> And we're going to replace this one with fit. And the last one we're going to replace is HMI. All right now, if I run this, if we run this, just this part right here before we before we run the whole line and create the tick two vector, you will see we've just sliced away all those tickers from line three that we know don't have financial data. So I'm going to go ahead and just run this. And now I have my tick two. All right. Down here, if I just run it, you'll see all those have been taken away. Now, that is the long way. There's obviously an easier way, right? If I just do tick, and this is we're going to use what we call the in command, right? And percent in and percent. No data. Again, no data is from up here from line three. No data is a vector of all the tickers that we, we know don't have adequate data. Now, what this does is, is this is really cool. This allows, this, what this does is, this checks every element in tick to see if it's in no data. So, in situations where there is any element in tick that is in no data, it's going to throw back a true. Uh, if there is no element in tick that's not in no data, it'll throw back a false. So, if I just run this command, you will see, and I'm going to run tick right below it so you can see the corresponding tickers. Right? Apple comes back as false. It comes back as false because although Apple's in tick up here in line 19, Apple's not in no data. Right? So it, it returns a false. Seeker comes back as true. Why? Because seeker is in both in tick and it's in no data. Right? So this is essentially allowing, this is essentially doing all the conditional statements for us. There's only one catch here it's returning Apple as false we want Apple, and it's returning the ones that we don't want as true. How do we deal with this? If you want to ever flip the Booleans, what do we do? Exclamation point. So now if we run this line 19, you'll see everything is flipped. Apple's now true, meaning that Apple's in tick, but it is not in no data. Seeker is false, meaning that uh, it is in no data, but we don't want it to be no, we essentially don't want it to be in tick anymore. Right, so everything's basically been flipped, and now we have these booleans. Remember, we can do boolean slicing. I simply pass these booleans back into my tick vector, and it does the slicing for me, just like last time. Less code, right? Obviously, you guys know which one I prefer, but again, you can use either way. You can use either technique you want, whatever you're more comfortable with. So now I have my ticker. All right, and now in the next. In my next video, I, I want to, my next part of the video, I want to now copy in my problem equations in my for loop and generate each of the eight indices, uh, store them in a vector, and create a data frame so we start filtering. All right? So that's what we're going to do in part two.